Yo, 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 Muddy Waters Podcast. This your boy Shaq Sims, and I'm here right now with a very special guest, hair extraordinaire, lace extraordinaire, wig extraordinaire, all of that. Here we <laughs> I'm here with Lace Assassin. What's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing fine to you. I'm good. I'm good. Good. Glad to have you on the show, finally. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, after like 20 attempts, you know, we finally made More this like shit happen. two. Like 20, dog. Two attempts. Like 20. See, I don't know what be going on behind the scenes to get these guests on my show. But nah, all just aside, thank you for coming on. Thank so for the people me. that's not familiar with you, which they should be, you know, if they haven't been living under a rock. Um, and know anything about hair and stuff like that Like tell the people where you're from Well I'm from Chicago But um, I started doing hair Because I lived in Wisconsin Which many people probably don't know Where Wisconsin Well they probably know what Wisconsin is But they probably like It's cows and farms That's what people be thinking But it's ghetto there But yeah um, um, I moved to Atlanta from Wisconsin And now I'm based out of Atlanta Doing all of my little, you know, exploration stuff with my business and seeing where can I push my brand to. Okay. So that's where I am now. Where? Now, how long have you been doing hair? I've been doing young. hair for, I'll say, four years. Maybe four, possibly five if you pushing it. But that's like the kitchen hairstyles when you just get started. Yeah. So, I don't know if I can count that. But. We can say a strong four. Okay. Now, growing up, did you aspire to do hair? Like, was that something you always wanted to do? Um, The crazy thing is no. Like, before I graduated, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was telling myself I was going to go to school for architecture, which, like, I'm not fair you know architect. Well, I could be because anything you put your mind to, you can do. Facts. But, um... I was telling myself I was going to do architecture, but, like, my senior year, um, when I was working, I had, like, 60 jobs throughout high school. I just couldn't, I just, like, 9 to 5 wasn't for me. Yeah. So, like, my last, I think in the spring, the spring, because we graduated in, like, the end of spring, been in the summer, like, spring, I had worked in a salon. Well, I will say, like, my first real salon. Mm -hmm. So, I was in a salon before that, which was, like, the, that same winter. Yeah. But I didn't stay there for long, and I left there for, like, a job. And then, once I left that job, I think I probably stayed there for two paychecks, maybe. Maybe two paychecks or so. And then, I went to, like, my first shop. And then, so, it kind of just flowed from there because... Once I graduated, I just started being at the shop full time. Yeah. What inspired you to, like, want to do hair? Was it seeing other people doing it? Was it you always like hair and stuff like that? Or was it just something that came natural to you? Um, I don't know. It's kind of a combination of both because I did, like, have a little interest in hair. But me growing as a hairstylist probably stemmed from me having to do my own hair. Yeah. Like, I used to do my own hair because... Like, the way I wanted to switch my hairstyles up, it wasn't going to work out with, like, my mama paying for my hair. Yeah. So, I would, she would get me, like, hairstyles, and I would, she would just expect me to keep them in to a doomsday. Like, so, I'm like, <laughs> I had to literally learn how to do my own hair. So, me practicing, like, on myself really kind of helped me grow that passion, too. Yeah. And then people, of course, see my hair on myself and... They'll ask me, like, to do their hair, which, like, friends and stuff like that. Yeah. So then I'll start doing friends, and then, you know, with that comes the money. You can start charging people. So I guess that's kind of how it blossomed. Yeah. Now, were your friends like, dang, your hair always look good. You know, I want you to do mine. Is that how I started, or were you just like, shit, let me do your hair? Like, um, shit More like, up. kind of in the middle. More like, let me do your hair. But, see, me, I probably used to lie and say I used to know how to do stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. And I would get in a person's head and do it. And like, it'll come out right, but it'll be like my first time doing it. But me, I'm a very visual learner. So I can see something and like instantly my brain starts churning on how to do it. So like I'll see hairstyles and be like, oh, I know I can do that. So that's what I used to do a lot. I'll tell my friends like, oh, yeah, I could do this hairstyle on you. Let me do it on you. And I'll do it and it'll come out like it may not be as perfect, but it'll come out like with a similar type of look. Mm hmm. Now, did you ever fuck somebody's head up back then? Like, Oh, of course. Like, 
my first, no, I'm not gonna say my first, probably like my second or third time, or my first time trying to do a frontal on my own on somebody, it was really bad. What they really say, bad. like, I don't know. She didn't really tell me nothing. She, like, I don't know. She didn't say nothing to me. I found out that she didn't like it through a friend at school, which is cool. And I feel like I really owe her like a free hairdo because to this day, ain't it? Yeah. Where she at, man? Shout her out. You follow her on the gram? I can't. I don't know if I can shout her out like that. <laughs> I can't even just have her. <laughs> hey, just DM her, man. Give her a free hairstyle. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm just gonna DM her one day. Like, you want your hair done for free? Nice. Because she really she deserve it. Because I I miss that girl. She man. paid you too. Yeah, she paid me. Oh man. And it was not nice. Did you know like you fucked it up like? Um, when I you don't know. Up. I can't re- put. I can't like think of my headspace back then. Cause back then, I probably thought thought it was cute and all, but I think I probably knew it was not that good back then. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't remember if she liked it or something. But it was more like I wouldn't even say the install was bad. I think it was more like the plucking and stuff, like the technique. Maybe something had went wrong up until me put it in her head. So that's kind of why that whole thing went like south. Yeah. Now, would you say you learned a lot of stuff from like YouTube and shit like that? Um, um, I could say YouTube like planted that seed. I had to like tend to it and water it and make it grow into a plant. Because to me, YouTube like when I started doing hair, YouTube wasn't really like a lot of people are doing frontals and stuff, but. Now, which I can say is I really like the way that YouTube is going because you have more hairstylists and people who are being more educative on us on the subject um, on YouTube versus like back then you will have people like doing their own hair. Mm-hmm. So now you see like a lot of people doing hair on other people and then helping that. But I didn't really have that. Like I had maybe like a little idea, but me, I really learned from trial and error because like mm-hmm. I said, I used to do my own hair. So I'll do it. See what I don't like, take it off, do it again, you know, until mm-hmm. I gain knowledge on like what I do like to do and what I don't like to do. That's yeah. pretty much today how I got my techniques and skills down too because each install I'll see like, oh, I like this technique, let's add it, or I don't like this technique, let's take it out. Yeah, that's what's up. That's dope. Like you really figured it out on your own, and it's not like you somebody can say like, oh. Lace Assassin got my sauce or, right. you know, she stole my style. Like, no, I got my own shit. You know what I'm saying? I figured this out on my own. Right. And the motherfucker can't say you copying them either. Like, you know. People can, people can try. But nobody can say they sat me down, taught me the game, and sent me on my way. Yeah. That's nobody real can shit. Say that. If anything, I'll probably say, like, this person could help. Like, I had a question. Like, oh, you know. What do you use for like this? Like, or what's your favorite part? Like that type of deal. Mm-hmm. But nobody really sat down and instilled in me, like this is the way to do it. But of course, people have helped me along the way, with like little bits and pieces. But I can say nobody literally sat me down and taught me, so they can say like, "Oh, this is my student. I taught them." You know? Yeah, facts. You know, motherfuckers are trying to take credit, especially when they see you get bigger than them. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck, man? I taught her how to. Or I remember, goddamn, we was. Nah, motherfuckers will try you like that. Facts. Especially black people. Definitely. People, everybody wants to attach themselves to somebody else's success. Facts. And I I won't stand for it. Like, if anything, the people who do help me, like, to this day, I always thank them and stuff like that. And I always, I'm a very supportive person. I always tag, like, my favorites, comment on their stuff, show love because... You know, even though they didn't help me per se, like, you know, but definitely that inspiration helps as well because, Mm -hmm. you know, you having something to look up to and aspire to and be like, oh, I want my work to look like this, you know, X, Y, and Z. So Mm -hmm. Now in Wisconsin, like you said, that shit is like small town feel, it's country as a motherfucker. It ain't nothing but white people. Wisconsin is. Wisconsin. But the city I'm from is Milwaukee. Oh, you from Milwaukee? Milwaukee is not... No, it's not like small town, country, none of that. It's ghetto. We got the Bucks in Milwaukee. It's trash. The, oh, okay. I'm not going to defend them because I'm not into sports like that, but right. it's ghetto. Yeah. Like, they steal cars and, you know, all that type of stuff, shooting, gang. It's ghetto in Milwaukee. And people, like, don't understand that. And I'm kind of happy I got out, too, because it's, like, really bad. It's, like, really violent there that... That's something that I can really say that I don't really, you know, mm-hmm. I, I barely like to go back and visit. If anything, I could just wish I could just take my mom and my sister and scoop them up and just bring them to Atlanta. Yeah. But they don't want to right now. 
They love you too much up there? No, not necessarily. I think my sister, my mom is ready for my sister to graduate high school. So once she's done with her senior year, she'll be good. She's a, no, let me get to lying. I think this is her senior, this is her, this can't be her senior year. She's so you don't know what your sister and all, that's I up. I left. So that's like soon up. as I, soon as I graduated from high school, I moved into a house in Milwaukee. I didn't even stay there a full year. I stayed there the full winter and I moved here. So I like. I hear like bits and pieces and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but I think this is her. She this is her junior year, yeah. Because when she graduate, well, when she's done this year, she's going to be going to senior year next year. Yeah, okay, she's going to junior prom. So yeah, is she going to go to college here? Um, I kind of want her do? to, but she is like you know exploring and doing her own stuff. So I really want her to come here, like to maybe Clark or even Spelman. Mm-hmm. So that way I can have her close. So it's like my mom here and her, because mm-hmm. that's like really, you know, all yeah. I really need for the homie feel. So I want her to, but we'll see what she decides to do. Yeah, hopefully they do. That way you ain't gotta go back. Like Milwaukee, like so I used to work for this company, and I used to. Um, my region was um, the Midwest, mm-hmm. so I dealt with. Um, it wasn't. Milwaukee. It was a small. T- it was a smaller town in Wisconsin. I forget the name of it. Mm-hmm. But everybody that I met from there, they sound Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, it was a lot of white people. people. A lot of even people, the black people too. They sound Canadian. They sound like Canadians. Say, like people up there got an accent. I don't know. The black people got like a Chicago accent. Mm-hmm. Kind of sort of depend on where they are. But like the white people sound Canadian. It was just like a real paid. small town I feel. It's, well, maybe so. I don't know where you was at. Yeah, but, but I used to talk to them over the phone. I never went up there. We just Wisconsin used to. Wisconsin is, is up there by Canada. Facts. They sounded like Canadians. Yeah, but it depends because, see, Milwaukee is lower in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. But it's like literally like the small, like little bottom corner. And then you still got the rest of Wisconsin. Because so. Milwaukee by the water, right? Mm-hmm. It's right. Um, right by Lake Michigan. Yeah. And, like, I used to have to um, correlate, like, different activities mm-hmm. for, like, the drivers and shit like that. So, I would have to, like, look up the Google Street View. And that shit looks small as fuck. I'm like, niggas doing crime in, in Wisconsin? Milwaukee, they is. Yeah. And I guess it's hoods everywhere you go. If you see if you see Milwaukee, I can pull up a picture and show you. Milwaukee look nice. It looks really nice. Yeah. But the thing is about Milwaukee, Milwaukee, they say Milwaukee is heavily segregated. Mm. Which you can say because like literally like all the white people stay like on the east side, more downtown, and then more of the black people stay more like on the north side area, and then you get um, like the Mexicans that stay more like on the south side. So it really is. Heavily segregated. Let me see if I can find a picture. Because I just think like a picture. It looks really nice. But they don't show you. You know, actually, what movie was that? Um, They filmed part of Transformers in Milwaukee. Word. So, it got to be something that's catching their eye. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, with it being heavily segregated, it's probably due to finances. You know? Like, you say all the white people live in one area, all the black people live in another area. That shit look nice. It look nice, right? It don't yeah. look like no... No cow town. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely heavily segregated. Yeah. So yeah, like that's that's one thing that's I can say is really like a downfall of Milwaukee and like they are really trying to um what's the word? Gentrify. Facts. And my thing is I feel like Milwaukee is trying to like fix one area. Because they're trying to fix, like, because we just added this new stadium or whatever, wherever the Bucks play. Because the Bucks is getting, like, a lot of attention, I guess. So, they're really making that downtown area nice. They just added, like, a new hotel and everything. But it's like, when you get out of downtown, north side, it just don't look nice. And yeah. then, like, the streets and everything, like, they really they fucked up. Together. The streets are horrible. Like, damn. They just need to write everybody out a little nice check. Like, here you go. Because a new tires. Nice yeah, like something like that because <laughs> the streets out there are really messed up. That's fucked up. They should go to politics out there or something, man. Mm-mm. That's not that's not what I'm looking to do. Not no politics. Right. Now, being that 
your business has grown so much mm-hmm. in a short amount of time. I'm sure it didn't feel short, but you know it was a relatively short amount of time. Not to knock it because right. you, your business has grown a lot. You're doing it big, man. Thank you. Yeah. So, what would you attribute your growth to, as far as like how it's grown so much? Because a lot of people, it's people getting their cosmetology licenses every single day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's somebody enrolling in them schools getting their license, but not everybody grows to the height that you have. What would you attribute that to? Well, I would say social media, and so this is how it all started. So like I was just doing my stuff. See me, I went to an art school. Like, my high school was, like, an art school, so I, I majored in, like, visual arts. So, we did, like, film, photography, that type of whole little, you know. So, I had, like, a particular eye for, like, my pictures on my page. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, my pictures on my page, um, like, my page used to, we could, like, take a little flashback, because I deleted some posts since then, but, like, my page used to look really clean. And now, I feel like it's all over the place now, but I used to have, like, little perfect i used to never upload nobody like without makeup or anything everybody used to be in the middle it used to be perfectly lit so like my page looked really nice and so the owner of the glue um that i use i use boho Boho. what's it called it's called boho boho bold hold bold hold like that's the glue that's like i swear by it that's the only glue i use but the owner um she reached out to me one day because i had like i used to tag her in my um pictures you know just like that's another thing i want people to do out there that's trying to get it on social media tag different companies that you're working with so they can possibly see it and repost it but yes yeah, so i um tagged her and she like reached out to me tag Apple. and she's like what your page is like you know so nice and clean so i guess she really saw something in me she really started pushing my page and um i think i was 16 or 17 at the 17 possibly at the time I wasn't, I know I wasn't 18 yet, but she like, um, started really pushing me. She like repost all my work and stuff like that. So she kind of helped garner that attention to my page. So my page started growing and then like I had hit something K like under 10, but then I had did this one hair post that had like went viral. Like a lot of people liked it. It was like an orange, um, like an orange like a ginger orange color not this kind of like a more orange color this with like a white patch kind of like a Keisha Cole moment and I had like got a whole bunch of likes on that everybody was reposting it so I had gained like probably five six seven thousand followers overnight yeah so then once I had like all that new following in it kind of gave my page an automatic boost because Mm. Now you have all these new people coming to your page and liking yourself too. So it's going to, you know, it's just, it's like not a slow, gradual change. It's like a big jump. Mm. So, yeah. So then I will post like that. And then like the hairstylist page will repost me. And then, you know, you get followers from that, like fellow hairstylists and then like clients as well. So um, social media really is like what I can attribute to me gaining my following so fast Mm -hmm. but um i feel like it's like you have to really work it the correct way Mm -hmm. because i used to like literally you can ask anybody from my old salon every time i used to do it here i used to be like this gonna go viral and like i used to want it to and like most of my posts a lot of my posts did go viral um i don't know what i'm not gonna say like i don't know what viral is to some people i guess it depends but to it's going to a lot of attention. Yeah, of I used attention. to post a lot on. I was really big on Facebook because Facebook is big back home. So a lot of my posts would go up on Facebook, like you know, ten thousand shares or whatnot, like that stuff, like that. So I always have it in my mind that I want to go viral. So I was like, we gotta go viral. And I used to always have like this little method. I'm like, you gotta post one video and two pictures on your page. You gotta be music in the background. Like I used to do like a whole little theatrics type of setup. For my post <laughs> and then like I would tag of course like my Instagram in the post on Facebook mm-hmm. like you know Instagram at blah 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 so that the people from Facebook can come over to my Instagram page and then now it's like the complete opposite I barely post on my Facebook page now unless it's like personal pictures of me mm-hmm. now when you say you know you go viral and mm-hmm. you get a lot of attention now does that how do you make that translate into business because business. you know a lot of times like 
shit go viral all the time. Right. People page it. Somebody might see something and they might like it, but that don't necessarily mean it translate into business. How do you make it translate into business? What do you do? Um, you just have to present yourself in a certain type of way, and you have to have that some type of business feature on your page. Like if I go viral all the time, but they come to my page and they see me, like say for Facebook, for instance, they come to my page and they just see me sharing memes and posting statuses all day after viral post. They're not really going to do anything. But for my Instagram, they come there and then I have like, you know, it's a more of a professional setup on there. I'll have like my links to whatever, like, oh, this is my website link. This is my booking link. This is my YouTube link. So that say you see my work on like the uh, explore page and you come to my page, you have something tangible that you can go like see and, you know, fill out like, oh, I'm going to go look at the booking page and see the different prices. So... That way, once you come to my page, you know, say I could do all the good work that I want. But if you don't see anything on there that translate into business, you know, you're not going to feel the need to come back, you know, for a business point. You just want to be like, okay, you know, I've seen this person before. I could just like the post and continue moving. But since a lot of people know I do different things by the way that I post them, let's say like, for instance, classes. Like, you know, if somebody goes to my Instagram right now, they could see like in my highlights, classes and I have like old testimonies so then you know I get like some replies who reply to that like oh when is the next class so it's just all about having that content out there on your page Mm -hmm. to make people see okay they present themselves in a business type manner as well as far as you know the page that can back it up with the business and I can see da 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 Mm -hmm. you know what I need to yeah that's dope a lot of people don't really take heed to stuff like that though a lot of people just want to get a lot of attention but this right. shit don't really translate into no dollars and shit like that like where do you um attribute your business mindset to like did you always have that um i don't know i can say one thing i can say like i'm still growing as like a business person i'm still learning every day and then like i have i'll ask advice from other hairstylists and then people you know, I'm always asking for advice because you can um, never stop learning for one thing. But, um, yeah, like I'm always asking stuff like mm-hmm. and I'm always finding something new out business wise every day. Mm-hmm. So um, I could say like my business mind set is kind of just still developing and growing. But I can say like I had to, you know, I had to get it because. Like you said, uh, people can come to my page and not, but if I'm not presenting like anything business wise, you know, it's not mm-hmm. gonna go anywhere. So I had to like literally make myself, you know, get up and be like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And like I, I kind of can say I started it like with my first class, cause me as a hairstylist when I first started, I was so young, so irresponsible. Like <laughs> I can say like me on a stylist side, I was like not a good stylist. Like the work. And everything was probably good, but, like, the work ethic probably was not good. Like, showing up late to appointments and stuff like that, all that type of dealio, you know, oversleeping and things like that. So, I definitely didn't get, like, my business ethnic, my business ethics from, you know, being, like, a hairstylist. But I can say, like, once I started doing my classes, that mindset kind of came in because I seen that money coming in. Mm. And I feel realized I had to... You know, this is real. You mm-hmm. know, it isn't like a little side hustle. This is where I can really make a lot of money off this. Mm-hmm. So I need to get my head specs together. So then I would ask, um, I would ask people for help, and I would just kind of take every little bit and piece from people and like build a puzzle. And, you know, I get my own picture. Mm-hmm. And like my first class, I can say probably I don't know. I feel like it's like it could be a disaster and it could be like really good at the same time. For it to have been my first class solely planned by me, I think like it went pretty good. I had I think fifteen people. That's love. Which was like good for me to have for it to have been my first you know, my first ever class. And then um you know, just going out there and doing it myself and then like I had met with the salon owner and she was telling me so much stuff. Like, yeah, you know, you really need to get this, 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 this. She was telling me, like, she could see where I'm trying to go. But she was telling me, like, you know, I'm kind of kind of just going. Like, you know, kind of lost in a sense. And I mm-hmm. needed somebody to guide me. But she could see that I was going in the right direction. But I needed the exact path, you know. So, yeah, me, I really gained, like, my business, you know, ethics and stuff like that from 
you know, having to literally just jump in the pool, you know, learn how to swim. Damn. Jump straight in the water. Yeah, like it wasn't no choice. You just got to go out and get it. Nobody can, nobody can instill anything in you. So at the end right. of the day, if a thousand people would have, you know, told me to do this, this, that, and the third, like it wouldn't happen if I didn't want it to happen. Mm. So I literally have to go out and do it and then get a feel for myself. Yeah, definitely. And then you'll appreciate it more too once mm-hmm. you get to where you're trying to go. You know definitely. what I mean? Learning it on your own and shit like that. So you brought up your class and stuff like that. That's dope mm-hmm. as fuck that you were actually able to translate. Because, I mean, people's, I'm sure with the amount of following that you have, with the mm-hmm. amount of people that admire you, people hit you up all the time. Like, right. how do you do this and how you do that? And I'm sure in the beginning you were probably like, you know, giving people little tips mm-hmm. and shit like that, but you probably getting a thousand DMs a week or some shit like that. So that's dope that they actually got to come out and check you out. And I'm right. sure it'll continue to grow. Like, how did that feel knowing that people wanted to pay money to learn some shit from you? Like, It was surreal because my first class... Literally me, um, I think I was I was eighteen at the time. I had to be, cause then I had my I had my first car, so I was eight my my first car note. So I was eighteen at the time. So literally me being eighteen, and you see all of these people in the class. And what I like to do at the beginning of my classes is I'll go around like tell me something about yourself, what you're looking to learn, what you already know. So I had everybody going around, and just to hear like the ages and hear everybody like oh, um, you know I've been. Um, a licensed cosmetologist for X amount of years, and I'm this old, and it just kind of like took me aback because I'm like, like damn, dog, just... like I'm like y'all coming to see me, like, and I'm just like 18, and I'm just like, you know, so it was really like a humbling experience, and it felt really good yeah. to know that people actually wanted to come out and, you know, actually hear what I had to say. It mm-hmm. Makes you feel like somebody because like all of the followers, you know, it's cool, but to have people come out in person and actually hear what you have to say mm-hmm. and you know take interest and you know like they're serious about it because they're paying their hard earned money for it you know it felt really good mm-hmm. that's crazy so what was like the oldest person that you would say would probably if you if you can remember like the oldest um, person i don't know i i don't know i don't like 35 i don't think i had no um no really like old old person you know what's I mean? old though i don't know like 60 and up maybe yeah i think everybody in my class is probably 40 and under damn a 40 year old like i would feel a mate like damn i would be very proud of myself like knowing like me being so young people twice my age been in the game longer than me want to learn something from me do you feel like your talent was like god given like you were put here to do this or do you feel like Um, you just adapted i'm i feel like i maybe adapted because to me like, I had a talk with one of my previous salon owners, and she was telling me, like, something like, is this your calling or what you want to do? And I was feeling like, kind of no, because me, like, I enjoy doing hair, but I feel like me becoming, like, a hairstylist has made hair a chore. And, like, I feel like it makes it, you know, I don't get to be as creative because I have to sit down with people and do what they want me to do and do their interpretation of it and you have to do it over and over again every day so it kind of feels more like a chore versus when i was back home um you know you get to do i have i was doing like a lot of my friends here so i got to do what i wanted to do i'm like Mm. oh girl let's do this look let's try this let's try that and i really had that love for hair i was youthful had the little stars in my eyes but now i was just like get up go to work do the heads and go home because everybody be like wanting the same thing they like Black, straight, black, curly. Maybe once in a while I get color, you know. So mm-hmm. it kind of it feels like a chore now. But um, yeah. So she was telling me like, "Is this your calling?" And I was kind of really feeling like no. And she was like, "So like, what do you want to do?" And I was saying like, "Be an influencer," which is that is kind of like a vague thing. And so many people now are being like influencers. But I really wanted to go out and push my brand as far as YouTube goes, because once I open up and I show like my personality, I feel like a lot of people will like me and be mm-hmm. able to, you know, relate with me, but that's something that I'm working on now is trying to open up and show more of my personality on my YouTube. But um, you were talking about, um, you know, your calling and shit like that. Like, are you one of those people, or were you one of those people, I should say, in the beginning that was just all about the money? 
Because, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in just the money, the money, the money. Were you always like that or were you one of those people that knew, like, this is what I want to do and if I don't enjoy doing it, I won't continue doing it for long? I think the money was definitely, like, enticing. It was really good to be able to know I can make a lot of money off this, but I feel like me, I'm not money hungry. Like, I know people that are, like, money hungry. And I'm not using that uh, term in a bad way, but, like, certain people, like, you know, like if somebody like if somebody calls them at like twelve in the morning, like hey, I need my hair done. I will pay extra, and they'll do it because they you know really want the money. Not necessarily in a bad way, but me, I'm not like that at all. Like I like prefer my peace. So like once I get like my certain amount of heads out today, I don't like to take no people extra. I don't care how much you paying any of that. Like I just prefer my peace as long as I got my rent paid and stuff like that, and I got like little change you know here and there. I'm good. So I would say I'm not really. I may have started out liking the money more because back then, like, I really feel like money talks back then. That's how it was for me. Like, yeah. people used to be able to get me to do probably whatever. Yeah. But now you can't get me to, like, do anything that I don't want to do. Like, extras. If it's, like, anything out of my normal booking boundaries, I just, like, don't really care to do it. Yeah. Wow. But that shows that you've grown in your business and you making enough money to where you don't have to be that hungry because you know starting out in, in the beginning of anything you're gonna chase every single dollar right. especially when you got your own business mm -hmm. and shit like that so speaking to people calling people at 12 a.m like what's the weirdest request you got from somebody to do hair was it like a late night last minute type visit or did somebody want you to go super far what um, was the weirdest request i mean i don't know i've gotten all types of requests like i've gotten people that want me to come far and I've gotten like, you know, early requests, late night requests. I'll say like one, one time I had this really early client and she was like, this was back when I was young too. So you don't have to be up all late, but she like wanted me to do her hair like 5 a.m. So me, I know how I oversleep. I'm like, I'm not waking up at 5 a.m. So I go to the shop literally like the night before and I go to sleep at the shop. So that way I can wake up the next day and yeah. be able to still do her hair. And I think maybe that was probably like something really crazy to do, probably so. But I mean, I don't know. I haven't really gotten like no weird requests, like you know, yeah. do this, this, that, and third. Like you know, I don't really think I get no crazy requests because me, like, I be, I, I would really like not respond. For real? Know? Yeah, because people don't know how to take no, so they'll ask you like, oh, can you do this? X, Y, and Z, and you say no, and they'll be like, but I can do, you know, people don't know how to take no for an answer. I had, like, one time, I had, like, um, one of the, uh, like, a celebrity client, and she wanted me to come out there, like, I, she was here in Georgia for, like, some book, and wanted me to come, like, an hour and a half away to do her hair, and then she wanted me to Uber, like, with my own money and stuff, like, because usually when, like, I have those clients who want me to do stuff, they have to pay for that stuff. Whether it be via deposit or like they just say like, oh, I'll send you a car or something like that. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to come like an hour or so away. And it was like one in the morning. And I'm just like, you want me to travel an hour to you at one in the morning. So let's calculate. Do your hair. Let's just say two and a half hours. That's already three something. Come back. Uh, I'll take an hour to get back. That's like four something. Get back home around four something, five something in the morning. No, like I said, like I really value my peace, and then she like really, I, she got really mad at me about it about not coming to do it. But I'm just like, you know, it had we had this set up, and you had, you know, booked something, and mm -hmm. we did a deposit, and everything could have been really smooth. You could have came at a decent time. You could have been prepared like for it, right? I even think I could have been prepared. I could have took a nap, but like Perhaps. you know, they just hit. She just hit me up like last minute, and it was just like, and she still like don't like me to this day. Like she will not. She but, blocked you? Mm, she didn't block me. I think she unfollowed me, possibly. But I'm just like, okay, you know, I don't... I It's no sleep lost on my end, literally. Because I wasn't going to come do nobody here at 1 a.m. and be done at 5 a.m. All money ain't good money. Definitely. And that's another right. thing people don't understand. You don't have to take everybody money because their money can come with their problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want people... You want don't want to take on people's problems. And then, like, that's another thing... But like doing hair too, you have, you pick up on everybody's energy too. Mm. Everybody coming in, you have all this different energy coming in. That's another thing where I could probably say doing hair has probably drained me. Is dealing with so much, so many different people's energy. You know. And then you got to talk to people. It's been like I've worked in customer service for years. You know, on different levels, business to customer, business to business, dealing with motherfucking 
you know, CEOs of companies, mm-hmm. niggas who make decisions, wear suit and ties. And and in every single one of those roles I've had to deal with motherfuckers' personalities. They talking about their problems. They talking about their mama just died, their wife just died. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, I get it, but it's just draining sometimes. So I can just imagine with you, you dealing with some you have to be very close and intimate with somebody. Right. You washing their hair. You sitting talking to them for three hours at a time. Like, I can just imagine how draining that is. But me, one thing about me is like I'm really I'm a quiet I said quiet, shy and quiet person. So half of the time I don't talk to my clients and I kinda wanna get out of that, but a lot of times I'll just have my little earbuds in and I'll just do their hair. Sometimes like I pick up on people's vibes, like the people who are really cool, like, you know, we can sit and talk, we'll have like discussions and all that type of stuff. But then some people I just pop my headphones in and I don't talk. And I don't I wish people would not see that as bad customer service because you have to understand a lot of different factors come into play with customer service and anything like I could have been having a bad day right. and I didn't want to spew that negative energy out by, you know, mm-hmm. so I just wanted to keep myself quiet. But yeah, I'm like a very quiet person. So that's like something that I like deal with a lot is like me being quiet while talking to clients, while Did doing people- clients. Do people complain about it? Like, um, or do, do they I don't be think like, nobody is, it, can... is this something wrong with me? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't think I've never really had that. But, you know, what can happen is I could lose that client. Because a lot of people are looking for um, a relationship with their hairstylist, too. And I've noticed the ones who I do engage with come back more often than the ones that I don't. And that's completely fine because obviously the people that I do engage with is somebody who I can connect with. So I don't kind of mind it. But. You know, I've definitely had, like, clients who, like, I don't talk to and they don't come back. You know, they may have loved the service, but, like, as far as the relationship, like, you know, the connection, it really wasn't there. And that's, like, something that a lot of people look for in a hairstylist because you want to be able to go to and gossip and talk and do this with your hairstylist. And if you can't do that, you know, it kind of feels like... Like, another thing, like I said, it feels like a chore. Sitting there getting your hair done, you just got to sit there and get your hair done. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not fun. You know, you come in, talk, chill, relax. You know, it's not that type of vibe. Mm -hmm. And people buy from who they like. Mm Mm-hmm, definitely. In any sector. People buy into people. Facts. So, like, you can, like, even, like, me, say, like, I don't. I don't do hair, you know, that good. But I have, like, a heart of gold and a great personality and great combo. They may come back just off the strength that I have that. You know, that good heart and that good conversation and everything like that. Because they know I can grow as a hairstylist. But they could go to another hairstylist and they could possibly not have the same personality that they experienced. Mm-hmm. Or the same relationship mm-hmm. that they can build with that person and all of that stuff. Now, speaking of clients, have you ever had to fire a client? Um, My barber I've definitely, fired like, I've definitely had clients like that. Like, I've had clients who come and they just do, like, so much. They'll just want so much. Like, they'll come... Like, oh, I want, I got this in my head already. I need you to take it down. I don't want you to wash it. I just want you to do this, do that. And I want you to put these pieces in. And I, like, they have like a lot of extra demands and don't want to pay like the extra money. And then like some people are just problem clients that you just like, <laughs> I don't want this energy coming back to my salon. So it's like, I'm just going to have to block you from my book and website. Damn. You can do that. Yeah, you can go right on there and click on the client name and block them from booking again. What? So have you ever blocked somebody and they called you like, "Why the fuck you? Did you block me? I can't." Yeah, I can't book and I just be like, me. "If you, if I be like, if you don't see a booking on there, I'm like, if the slot isn't available, that's all I'm gonna say. Like the slot isn't. What am I gonna say? Oh, I blocked you because then they're gonna try to plead that clay case. I'm just like, no. If you don't see the spot and time available that you're looking for, it's not available. Mm. And that's it. They can't argue about it. <laughs> That's crazy. I ain't know you can do that. I'd be mad as hell if my barber blocked me, dog. Yeah. But I've been going to that nigga for a long time, so he wouldn't block me. That's family too, by the way. But um, now the lace front game is big now. Like it's everywhere, all over the Everybody internet. Everybody wearing it, especially Atlanta, bro. Them mm-hmm. shit is everywhere, man. Like, were you always doing lace fronts, or did you just adapt to that game? Like, um, that's kind of what I. That's what made my second salon um take interest into me because she was seeing that i was doing like the frontals and stuff like that and she didn't really like doing them so that's i kind of been doing it for a while i never really picked up on anything else like you know i'm kind of learning more stuff now 
but I've always like done like wigs and stuff like that. That's always been like my expertise, and I never really like I just never really cared to do anything else. Like it's mm. a lot of different array, like natural hair, you know, shortcuts, this that. I just never have felt compelled to do anything other than wigs. Like that's really what I like to do because it's like a craft, you know. I really like to do that, but I haven't really just taken interest in doing nothing else. So it, I just I'm really content with doing them. And it allows you to be artistic like you really want to be, mm-hmm. in a way, you right. know what I mean? Because, like, when you're just doing regular hair, I can just mm-hmm. imagine that gets so boring, just, right. silk, you, you know, can press only do so shit, much. you know, braid it. Because a lot wigs, of people don't get their natural hair done. You could do a lot with wigs. And it's just, like, a really, like, it's like an um, art. Like, creating the hairlines and styling it. And it's just a lot of different things you can do with wigs that you can't do with your weird real hair, even though... They're really made to look like real hair. It's like a lot of stuff, you know, that you can do with them that you really can't do with your real hair. So that's why I just prefer to do wigs like over anything else. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people want to do lace fronts now. Even people that's not even licensed cosmetologists are doing lace fronts and shit like that. Do you ever see that and get kind of mad? Like, damn, stay in y'all own lane. Like, y'all don't even know what the fuck y'all doing. Um, you not necessarily. I, I, what I don't like to see is people who feel like they know it all like as far as like you know because for me like i'm like a kitchen stylist too like i just started my kitchen but i um i just hate for them to feel like nobody can tell them nothing Mm -hmm. and with me like a lot of people i'll see like where they can improve and i'll like want to help them but everybody doesn't take criticism well so if i tell you like hey for this technique, you should do this or this or that. You could, and you tell me something like, "Oh, you know, I will do this." You know, I that's what I just don't like. I don't really care to see like people doing it because everybody it's enough money for all of us. But for people to like, you know, not want to take help and you know, because like if when I started out, if somebody would have told me do this, do this, do this. You know, this helps you. You know, I wasn't the type to say, "Oh, I already know what I'm doing." You know, mm-hmm. even to to now, like I'll probably I probably won't say that. You know, like, I'll take, like, even, like, in my classes, a lot of my students bounce ideas off each other, and I learn stuff as well. Mm. So, I'm never the type to be like, oh, you know, okay, I already do it. You know, I, that's the only thing I don't like is to see, like, stylists who feel like they can't improve or, like, they know it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And in that industry, you know, because... Um, the hairstyle industry has changed a lot over the past couple of years. Definitely. You know, it's more lanes for people to get into. You know, you mm-hmm. got braiders, you got like you said, natural hairstylists, shortcut hairstylists, lace hairstyle, uh, well, wig hairstylists now, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. People who just make wigs, they don't even do hair; they just right. make wigs and shit. Mm-hmm. So, um, with that being said, it's always something new to learn. It's always something new to learn, definitely. So, it's good that you got that mindset. Like, you know, definitely. Right. Now, um, what's next? For your business i know you got some stuff coming some new stuff you got some products um, on the way products are coming soon like i've really been sitting down and debating and talking with my good friend about like a product that i can come out with and like i want to come out with something you know that's kind of like you know just an essential that you add to your kit not like a, a all-around type of set or any i just want to add like something that'll just help you out like oh this is a kit somebody could be like oh this is something i need in my kit this a hairstylist tool. kid or just yeah like just people that do hairstylist wigs in general maybe people that do their hair at home like this is a tool that can help me my kid just like you know people that are like oh i like to add to have this baby hair bro you know mm-hmm. just like a tool that they can add to their kid yeah so i've been really sitting down and thinking about what would be like the perfect thing that i would probably want as a hairstylist or you know another hairstylist may need or want you know, to add to that kit. So once I figure it out and formulate what I want, you know, my packaging, everything's gonna be real cute. Yep. My promo photo is gonna be real cute, and yeah, my pro- my product is of course gonna be like a good quality product. So that should be coming soon. That's really what I want to branch off to in uh, 2020 as well. Is like you know, actually you know pushing products. Yeah. Maybe. Other brands too, like getting sponsors and stuff like that. That too, like I'm really um, looking to work with another brand. I get like people messaging me as far as like ambassadorship goes, like, hey, can you be a brand ambassador and stuff like that? So I've been really trying to 
build myself i think that's the goal too is to build myself as a brand mm. you know so it's like people can buy into me and be like oh we want you to represent our product so you know hey we're gonna go ahead and work with you or whatever da, da, da. so that's what i'm trying to um go for to doing in 2020 as well yeah we got a product coming out soon we're gonna collab what we gonna come out with i don't know man it's gotta be something i don't know podcasts and hairstylists I'm not, come out with? I'm not just a podcaster, you know. What else you do? I'm a YouTuber too now. Oh, that's good. A YouTube channel. That's good. Well, Me YouTube. too. I got a YouTube channel. I don't know. What what could we do? Um I want in. I need in to the hair industry, man. I need a product to sell. You ain't even gotta put my name on it. We can just partner up, you know? I got ideas too. We can, bounce, we can do we can, we can bounce ideas around. We can do a lace front makeup. Cause Somebody don't, got that already. I don't like me. One thing I don't like to do is step on people's toes. And I'm one for I don't really like to compete. Like, even now, like, I haven't been doing classes because I see so many people doing them. I don't like to compete. I like my avenue and my lane to just be clear. You know? What about a wig shampoo? That shampoo already exists. But just for wigs, though, you it protects the how wig. How can you make a wig, a shampoo specifically for a wig? To some protect people probably got somebody got something like I see so much products that are like being made like and people will send them like hey can you try this out and stuff like that I see so many different things being made so it is kind of like a what can I make you know and you really just think of like you start with like thinking of really simple things but then you realize like a lot of stuff is already made so yeah I'm like trying to figure out that's what's been really hard for me is trying to figure out what type of product like I said what is the perfect product that everybody's gonna want in their little tool kit like oh i want i want this i need this in my kit but whenever I, when i do come out with it i'm no i know who i'm collabing with not to say i'm not collabing with you we could have maybe something else but that's i know my up, first dog. product that's i'm fucked just up. gonna collaborate with my favorite person that's fucked up that's fucked I up. i have to I, I told her i was going to already oh, okay so once i come out with it i don't know what it may be but we gonna find don't worry i'm gonna come with my own drip it. That's good. And I'm gonna step on your still toe. Support it. You can't step on my toes. I'm gonna step on your toes. I'm, my toes are gonna be steel toe boot covered. You know, I that's don't, real. I, that's why I say I don't like to step on nobody else's toes, and nobody can't step on my toes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a mentality because people can try to deliberately step on my toes, but this up here is gonna feel like, oh, they didn't step on my toes. They doing good for themselves. That's good for them. So I never have that mindset. Like, oh, this person is stepping on my toes because what's for you is for you, and nobody can take that away. Facts. Yep, your lane to be clear. Even if it's other people doing the same exact thing as you, you know, you'll be able to go through that thing without any hesitation or any um, pushback. Definitely. So, um, 2020, other than some products coming, other than, you know, your YouTube growing and stuff like that, because you say you're expanding your YouTube, what else can we expect from you? I'm debating on starting uh, my hairline back up. I was like, when I first started, I had like this little wig line that I kind of let flop because I didn't really tend to it how I needed to. I may let it come back because I get a lot of requests for wigs and stuff like that. And that may, that may help me bring back that creativity and spark for hair by being able to sit back and do wigs and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and create. Cause I'm not, I don't have to necessarily only take orders from people saying, Oh, I want this. I can make something. And put it out there to sell. Mm. So, I mean, that's something. I kind of had like a setback. So, that's something that possibly can come out. We'll see like how I feel. I'll be on the fence about it because hair is like a really tricky, you know, avenue. And like that's a whole nother lane of customer service that you got to get into too. As far as like making sure everything is tailored to the customer. And then also replying, you know, around the clock. And then this client wants this and her wig is you know so that's like a, another lane of customer service mm-hmm. that i would have to get into yeah and you don't want to end up on tsr what i got versus what i asked for oh, they never, they, it's never gonna be <laughs> what that. i asked for versus what i got because i see that shit all the time it's but not gonna be that it's not gonna be that when you're sending somebody a wig it'll be like i what like i said one thing about me i can make it look like for real know? yeah so it'll look good yeah but they you know people find and then another thing, people just find something to complain about. Facts, they do. To get, like, refunds and stuff like that. Especially they can love the wig, but they could be like, oh, I want a jet black and it's not black. I need my money back. You know? Little stuff like that, so. Especially when you're black. Mm-hmm. And dealing with people other black people. You know. They don't respect it. They don't. They really don't. 
and they see you as a joke. So that's another thing. Like, they don't go to Kim's with that shit. They definitely don't. They, they don't, don't go, go to, to like that shit. They don't. Asian motherfuckers. Mm-mm. No return policy on God. And they, they just complain. and they take it and take. I see people get messed up at the nail shop. You get the occasional people that'll fight them, but they just take it and go and be like, okay, cool. But then you get sit down in a black, uh, like a black owned nail salon to get your nails done by a black nail tech, and you could like something, but oh, a few rhinestones pop off, and you want to go to social media and bash her. I don't like. I really don't like that. I think black people feel like it has to be only them. And I like remember hearing a quote like, "Don't watch out for the black person who wants to be the only black person in the room" or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of black people have it out for the next person because they don't want to see a black person doing better than them. It's like crabs in a barrel. Definitely. Grabs in a barrel, and they don't see themselves becoming successful, so they don't want you to be like this nigga made it. Right. I mm-hmm. remember, you know, like you said, people want to attach themselves to your success and shit like Definitely. that. Definitely. Like I went to school with a lot of people who became successful in many different facets of life. You know, rappers, producers, athletes, and shit like that. And it's always one person out of a group of ten that's talking shit about that person. Like I remember that nigga; he wasn't shit back in the day. Definitely. You know how many people probably. You know how many people probably look at my work now and see me doing, like, you know, celebrity clients or whatever, and be like, I remember when um, I got my hair done and it was messed up. Yeah. You know, like, okay, well, take this opportunity now to come back. And that's that's all I can do as a, as a business person is try to right my wrongs. I can't do nothing else but that. So you mm-hmm. want to come back and get slayed now because the skills have advanced, leveled up. Or what do you want to do? Still be living in the past to be able to say, oh, I got messed up versus saying, you know, I came back and it turned out good. They don't want to, though. They don't want to. They don't want to. They like to have that negative connotation of you in their head. Because you're successful now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Back then, you were finding your way. And the only thing they can say is, oh, they messed my hair up back in the day. So what? I don't care. You You know how many people probably come to them and show them like, Remember such as such from high school? You know, and then they be like, damn. It's crazy, too, thinking about how you can just literally blow up. Like, I be looking back at my high school, and I did not think I was going to blow up. And I just be looking at some of the people I went to high school with, like, people probably did it black, that didn't let me, let me do their hair or something or any type of little thing like that. Yeah. And I just be looking at them like. How does it feel, though, to be successful? And something that you probably never imagined you'd be as successful as you are now in. You know what I mean? Like, how do, how does it feel now? Because you're able to take care of yourself. And I'm sure you're able to help your mom, your sister. you probably been to places you never thought you'd be able to be in the amount of time that you were able to go to those places. Um, I don't know. I still, like, kind of don't feel successful. Not to say, like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like when you are doing something, you don't really see it. Like, say, like, a famous rapper or something that's getting big. They really probably don't see they So, you know, mm-hmm. I kind of don't see myself probably as big as the next person may see. I don't know if that's maybe because I'm just looking at myself. I've just been looking at myself as the same or because I've watched myself grow gradually. So, it doesn't feel as, you know, <laughs> big as it may as it may seem to the next person. But I don't know. I don't think I'm... I won't say, like, I'm not successful by any means. But I don't really look at myself... I just feel like a regular person. Yeah. Definitely. Like with a nine to five job, that's how I feel. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people when they get success, shit, fuck that, scratch that one. A lot of people get a lot of followers. They feel like they are somebody completely different. Like they're not just a regular person Mm -hmm. who has a following. And that shit weirds me out. I'm like, bro, you don't do nothing at all. You're just popular. Like that's it. You have no type of service to offer. People go to your page <clears throat> and they can't buy anything from you. Like you got a hundred thousand followers, but you haven't made one cent off of those followers. Me, I don't know. Like I feel like another thing. I don't know if I don't look at me having a lot of followers as me having a lot is because I'm always striving for more. Facts. But like I don't know. I definitely appreciate every single last follower that I have. But I mean, I'm always striving for more because it's always a bigger number mm-hmm. to be up there on my follower count. So I'm not saying like right now what I have is bad or I'm not content with it, but of course growth is always the goal. So growth really should think, be the goal. I don't think I look, you know, because to me, like my followers, follower, 
count doesn't equate to real life. Like you said, you can make not a single cent off your followers. So I can't go anywhere in real life and be like, oh, like I can't go to like Target and be like, oh, I have the blah, 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 follower discount, bloop, and get like, you know, money. It doesn't equate to real life. Mm -hmm. So you don't really gain anything from being able to say you have a lot of followers. You really can't. Unless you got a link in your bio that you can sell something with. Right. You know what I mean? That's the only way it'll really translate into something. Or you have something to offer those mm-hmm. followers and shit like that. And then you got people who don't have a lot of followers who get more engagement than those people who do mm-hmm. have followers. And more money as well. Facts. It could be somebody out here with 10 followers, but guarantee you her. She's a hairstylist. She's probably booked from day to night, every single day, making more money than somebody out there with 500,000 followers. And that's a hairstylist. Facts. I used to work for this company here. Um, I ain't going to say the name of it. <clears throat> but the owners of the company, it was a family-owned company. It was owned by a dad and two sons. Mm-hmm. And one of the sons, we followed each other on Instagram. And this nigga had, like, 200 followers. And this nigga drove a Audi R8, had a Rolls Royce, and a Lamborghini, all parked out front of the business. Right. Like, them niggas was making millions and millions and millions of dollars. And didn't have a million followers. No. That nigga ain't even have a thousand and hadn't had and at the time it was 2017 so he hadn't posted since like 2016 mm-hmm. you know what i mean so he didn't even give a fuck about instagram right. this nigga was looking at it i went in his office one day to show him some shit some reports that i had to bring to him this nigga had was on zillow looking at a three three million dollar house right and that's because that money you know that work ethic whatever he had is real life it's tangible right. you know these followers are not tangible unless I, like you say, have something to offer them. Now, if I could post this and say, oh, all of my followers come to my class, and I have uh, whatever X amount of people, you know, in my class, then that's something tangible. Mm-hmm. But until you break that barrier through the screen and you have that interaction with followers and like real people, you know, then that's when you can really say, that's when you can really say like you know your followers are like tangible but until your followers bring you a single cent they don't they don't count it's mm-hmm. just like a, it's just like a decoration for your profile facts they just be posting oh i just got to this goal on instagram but it's like for what like why why does it matter and you niggas should work harder in real life than you do on the internet bro to get followers and pussy all you niggas should man all of you I want better for you in 2020. I heard it. <laughs> Tell the people where they can find you at. You know, if they want to get slayed. Um, I'm on Instagram at Lace Assassin. That's Assassin spelled A S S A S S I N. Lace L A C E. It's a Lace Assassin. That's my Twitter handle, Instagram handle, YouTube name. That's where you can find me. Like, I'm just a lace assassin, period. Come get assassinated. And if you don't, you know, even if you don't want to get your hair done, come support, come show love, come like a few posts, comment a little bit, watch a few YouTube videos because in 2020, we all supporting each other because that's how we all going to grow is by supporting each other. So, you out there hating, it's going to come back on you tenfold. Facts. Period. Get you some business about yourself. Definitely. And we got products coming soon. We're going to do it like a YouTube collab. We got, we're going to do YouTube collab? Sure. That didn't sound convincing, dog. I need to know, like, what the product going to be. You, tell, you like, pitching wig shampoos and stuff. I need, like, a good Listen, we were doing the idea. interview. This is on the spot. Like, I got you. We gonna, I'm going to pitch it to you off air. Okay. And we're going to do a YouTube collab. Okay, definitely. Definitely. What, you going to get, like, a man weave? That's what I do. See, on, I need a man that's weave. what I do on my channel. It's Damn, hair. Dog. So if you want to come get like a you man trying to say I need a man weave, dog. Maybe so. No, I'm not saying Low you key know. I do. But 2022, I'm getting the Tory Lanes. Don't worry about it. You know where they take the blood out your arm and put it in your head? That's what Tory Lanes got. I'm gonna get that. So my shit can be like Tory Lanes. What? You don't you that's for people who got like a low a receding hairline. My shit receding, facts. It don't look like it is. It is. It's receding. I've seen receding hairlines. My shit's receding. It don't receding. look that bad. But it's because my hair is thin. And it's, way, it's like, you know, straight and kind of, you know. 
and it's really soft, but trust me, it's received. So do we see like a man weave in 2020 for you? I'm never wearing a man weave. I'll go bald before I do that. I'm a real nigga, man. I come, where I come from, my niggas will smack the shit out of they me. They won't have to know. They'll, but them niggas will see me today and then see me in two weeks with a damn man weave and be like, bro, what the fuck? Man weaves be looking like that. It'll I'm be never, like haircuts. I'm never wearing a man weave. I'm well, going to just get the surgery. Or I'll just go bald. Like, fuck it. Even though I don't have like the good a good head shape to go bald, everybody like, can't go bald. Facts. I gotta get the man. I gotta get the. Um, I think it's called PRPS. I think it's called PRPS. I kind of want that. Procedure. What PRPS? The yeah, the hair, the surgery to make your hairline. Yeah. They take like hair. They no the hair. The one I'm thinking of is when they take follicles from. They'll cut out a piece of your scalp and take follicles and put it in the front. Yeah, see, like, that's kind of old school. They used to do that. A lot of people used to advertise that back in the day on, like, billboards and shit. But now what they do is they take the plasma out of your arm and they inject it in the spots where your hair is, like, going at. And it restores the growth in your hair. But that's restoring the growth. Like, the one I'm saying with the follicles is going to put hair where hair hair ain't supposed to go. So, like, say I got it put on my nose. I start growing hair out of my nose. For real? Yeah, but I want, like, I want them to put it... I feel like I got a big forehead, like a five head. So I want them to like put some more hair up there for me. Never even thought about that. I didn't know people did stuff like that. That's what they do it for. Yeah. I thought they did it for the people who um people who doesn't choose to do it. Yeah. Everything like is cosmetic nowadays. So even if you don't need it, you can still get it. Facts. Especially these asses, man. And titties. But yeah, I'm getting the Tory Lanez, bro. Shout out to Tory Lanez for motivating me, man. Because I was kind of sad, like, looking in he the mirror, made, like. He was doing Beijing. Nah, Tory Lanez was doing Beijing. He ain't yeah, doing he that was. shit no more. He ain't doing it no more. Like, if you look at Tory Lanez now, like, his shit is, like, full. You remember Tory Lanez was damn near bald? He was talking about it in the Joe Let's Budden see. interview. Facts. I don't know. I'm getting that shit. I can't think shit. of Tory Lanez right now, like, in my head. How Facts. His, how his hair look. This shit is fire, man. It's probably a man weave. No, it's not. You don't know what it is. That man say he got the surgery, he dog. He could say it's. He could say that. That man got the weave. surgery, dog. Tory Lanez ain't motherfucking lie. It's looking like a man weave to me. It ain't. Cause it look, look, no, how a man thin weave that is back there. And yeah, how that's cool what I'm saying. That is. No, he got the thing. Cause look, look, it that's look his like real a, hair, bro. It look like a man, man weave gonna be perfect around no, the edges and everything. Perfect. Nah, bro. And you can see, like, the injection marks, too. Look at that shit. Mm, could be a man weave. That ain't no man weave. You would never know. I'm never getting a man weave. My niggas would slap me. My mama would smack me. Like, boy, get the fuck out of here. You should they won't They won't have to know. Fuck that. You would have to tell him. Because then when you laying down with somebody and they want to, like, touch your hair, it's like. They can. Nah. It feel like and look like people real hair. Well, I want to know that my shit is real. Like, I don't want to. You know, I guess that's like walk. That's like driving another nigga car and posting it on Instagram, like it's you yours. So. And it's, you know what I'm saying? People wear girls can wear wigs and stuff like that's that. That's women though. Y'all got hair. Like women have hair already. But you got hair already too. Say you want wet, like deeper waves. You can get like man weaves to get deeper waves. I never had waves in my life. I tried, dog. Back in the day. Like, middle school, I used to put the Murray's wave grease on. I used to brush my shit with hot water. Like, I used to put the wave cap on. I remember the first time I did it, I was so excited. Like, my niggas told me what to do. I wrote down the instructions. I woke up the next day, took that do-rag off. If I, like, gel my hair back in a ponytail, it'll have waves. For real? Like, it'll look wavy. That's hard. I don't do that, though. That's hard. I just have my, like, little braids to the back under here. See, that's hard. I ain't never been able to get ways. But you know it is what it is. But I appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. It was really dope. I learned a lot about you. And I'm sure you can give people some motivation, too, that aspire to do what you do. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. If you out there, like, it's nothing to it but to do it. And if you always, like, I always motivate people if they have any type of questions. Like, you know, you can't go too in depth because y'all be trying to ask me, like, how do I pluck a front on like y'all can't ask me that but y'all want like motivation on how to gain clients and stuff like that I definitely always answer those questions in my DMs because I was in that spot once upon a time so I always try to be you know nice and help out the next person yeah and I'm her manager now so look if y'all 
I'm the manager now. I'm my own manager. No, I'm the manager now. So look, if y'all want like tips and stuff, y'all gotta pay her, but you gotta go through me. So I'm DM me manager. first. DM me first, and then I'll relate a question to her, and I'll get my percentage. Muddy Waters, we out. <laughs>